What you're about to see are passionate, dedicated, and trained people practicing and preparing to enter an extreme sporting event that may change their lives. Do not try this on your own without necessary experience and supervision. Breathe in, breathe out. This moment's what it's all about. Want to be great, your golden way. Don't hesitate. Accelerate. Set for the race, aim, aim to give it all I've got. Mind is set, gonna reach the high spot. Working hard in order to fulfill my goal. Nothing can stop me from getting what I'm going for. That's being great. I was working to the same, so I won't hesitate. Gotta get to first place. Hands on the golden plate. I concentrate. Won't hit the brake. Just go forward. Accelerate. Last week, we saw ballroom and Latin dancers in a Temba Nyangela. They competed in a tough regional dance sport competition and managed to waltz their way to second place. This week, we meet two new young athletes who are competing in their own extreme sports. Let's see how they prepare for their upcoming events. I stay in Johannesburg North and I live with my mom, dad and brother. I'm nine years old and I'm in grade three. My friends call me Tony. When I was three, my mom once took me skating, but I wasn't really interested. So I tried again when I was seven, and I got the hang of it, and I decided it was really fun. So I started taking lessons at an academy at ice skating, so I decided to start skating. The competition that I'm preparing for is Interprovincials that is going to be held in Pretoria. This competition is very important to me because there's going to be some Cape Town girls coming to join us and I'm a bit excited and nervous. When I'm skating, I am very happy that it's something different than doing work, running, athletics and all those things. I feel like every day is Freedom Day and I can just be free and just skate and have fun. I'm 11 years old and I'm grade 5. I stay in Tableview with my mom, dad and my sister. The first time I rode a bike when I was 5. The reason I started bike racing is because my dad always did it and I really interested me. And then we went to PE one year and he went to the person who ran, ran, runs NSF and said, here's a little kid who wants to race. And that's how I started. It made me feel really like happy because I was being like my dad and doing what he could do. My future plans and aspirations in the sports is hopefully to go race nationals. And then obviously my dream in the sport is to go race up to MotoGP, which is one of the top racing in the world. I'm preparing for round five of the short circuit racing, uh, which is a club race, but it's still very competitive. Every time I race motorbikes, it just gives me such an adrenaline rush, just the speed that you're going and just to enjoy it as much as I can. I'm very excited because it's a new season and I get a new dress and I can show everyone my new moves. How I would feel if I was to win the event is happy, excited and I would be happy because I made my family happy, my coach happy, everyone happy. Winning means to me that I tried my best and I achieved the gold medal and I never gave up. If I don't achieve the goal I set for myself, I will still be happy that I competed in it, took place in it. I would just go on with life and be happy how I skate. for round five of the short circuit championship 
It's a club event, but it's still very competitive. This event's important to me because I can get, if I do well, I get more points to my championship, and hopefully I can win it this year. So far, I'm third in the championship because last race meeting I had a big crash and I couldn't do the race, so I dropped down to third. If I win this event, I'll be very happy because then I get more points for my championship and I'll walk away with the first place trip. If I don't win this event, I'll be quite upset because we've been working really hard to improve my bike, but we'll try and hope for the best. Some of the gear that you use in figure skating is your figure skating boots, skate guards, and for competitions, you need a special fancy dress. Some of the basic rules in figure skating is you have to look presentable and professional, and when you're jumping, you must always land on one foot. When you're skating, you must present like your personality, Posture, be happy, like if you fall, the show must go on. Some of the basic tricks in figure skating is waltz jump, salco, flip, and loop. Some of the risks in skating is falling. You can fall and maybe hurt your ankle break your wrist and but it all becomes much more easier because you have to learn to fall learn to keep your head up keep your fingers in in case someone doesn't see you when you're on the ground and then they might go over your fingers but always keep your hands in a fist when you fall i race in two classes the nsf 100s and the cbo 150s the NSFs is 8 to 14. In the 150 juniors, the class is 13 to 18. But because of my talents, I've been allowed to race in there. And it's very, very nerve wracking, but quite exciting. You, for gear, you have a helmet, which protects you from any concussions if you fall. Then you have a leather suit for when you slide off, that it, you don't, get hurt too badly. Then you have gloves, which are also made of leather to protect your hands. Then you got leather boots, which protect your feet and make sure nothing happens to them. Then you also have knee sliders, which, because you come into a corner with your knee out and it touches the ground. So the knee sliders try protect the Velcro. Then you, with the bike, you also need tire warmers, which help warm up the tires so that once you go out for a session, you don't have to warm the tires up and there's less of a risk of you falling. And then obviously the bike, which is your main piece of equipment. The basic rules are basically you have flags which on track tell you about the situation, like a green flag tells you if everything's clear, you can go. The yellow flag tells you caution because the rider has crashed in that area. The red flag says that the race has ended or practice because there's been a serious accident. The checkered flag just tells you the race is finished. Then there's also the rules, like the basic rules don't jump start, which is if you start before the lights actually go off. If you get a jump start, you get a three place penalty. And if you cut the corner, you either let the rider behind you go past or you'll get a 30 second penalty. The risks associated with motorbike racing, well, there's obviously the chance that you could fall and break every bone in your body. And it comes so quickly that you don't realize it. You practice a lot to make sure that the, the risks are slightly less, but, and you wear protective gear to, say, to help protect you, but there's always a chance that you can fall and get seriously injured. 
this sport takes lots of dedication because my mom has to drop me off at skating, wait for me at skating, pick me up from skating. Normally I spend about four days a week and then towards competitions and nationals, I do training every day. My parents are very supportive. If I have a competition or a national, my whole family has to come. They just won't refuse not seeing me skating. If I have a competition in some in like Cape Town or Durban, my family will come there. I think Tolly skating has been good for us as a family because Although I, has been, I have been a skater, the rest of the family has never skated. So it's something that the, the, the family can come together around. And yeah, so that's been very positive. If your child wants to do figure skating, you must know that it's a long-term commitment. It's, it's nothing that you will like achieve success in one or two years. You know, you're in it for the long run. Practice hours are, are, are not sort of normal hours, it's early in the morning, sometimes we start at 5 o'clock, sometimes we skate in the evening, so probably sometimes I could be nagging about sleeping in time, eating the right things, and, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best not to be that helicopter ma mom hovering about all the time. The upcoming competition will be the first one for this season, so it may be a bit extra exciting because it's the first time Tolly does a new routine and a new dress. If Tolly doesn't do as well as she expected, my plan is just to be there for her and to be calm and to be confident and, and she must know, you know, that we love her no matter what. My coach is Dino Quattro and he was a men's Olympic skater and he represented South Africa. My coach is very fun and funky when I do everything right and listen to him. And when and I get everything wrong and pull on my jumps, he can become a bit strict and shout at me. Oh, what is with that bent leg on the landing? And why are we throwing the arm around like this into the axle? You can rotate easily, you don't have to help yourself with these extra arm movements like that. Arms back and straight into the body. I don't want to see this arm whipping like this. Well, that wasn't a bad one. Hey, where were your arms in the landing? Where are they supposed to be? Lift up your leg. Turn your toe. Hey, I don't want them up here. All right, hey, let's do Lutz Axel. The upcoming Gauteng Interprovincial as, um, is the first um, start of our competition season. So it's the first competition for the company. With regards to Tolly, it's a new routine. We want to get her out there and see what the judges think about the new routine, um, if I need to make any changes, if the costume works for her. Expectations for me are always high. I have a very big team that's going to this competition. I have 10 skaters competing, so I expect my kids to do well. Um, and I'm always you know, I'm very, I'm tough on my kids, I really am, and people will be the first to tell you that I'm hard on them because I want them to do the best that they possibly can. I think some of the reasons that, that Tolly is good at sport is because, um, number one, she's got a great deal of dedication. She's got a good um, support system behind her and her mom, um, who was a former figure skating champion, and obviously knows what it takes to get to where she wants to get to. Um, she works really hard, and she's incredibly talented. You know, she has a natural ability to perform. You know, the mere fact that she gets up there, trains, does what she has to do, is going to take her further, and not only in skating, but in many aspects of life. So for this competition, with regards to my expectations for Tolly, um, we don't have a lot of girls competing in, in her section at this competition. However, she is skating against two girls that beat her at the, the recent um, national championships. So I would dearly love for her to be ahead of them. In doing so, she'd be first. But um, winning is not everything. I wanted to go out there and have a good skate with this first routine so that that confidence builds with each event that we go to, culminating obviously in next year's nationals when the aim of this year is for her to become a national champion. The biggest lesson this sport has taught me is to never give up and have fun. If you fall, get up and try again. So in a normal week, I'll go once 
a week down to the track to race my to ride my NSF and my 150. But on a race weekend, we spend more time at the track. We go down on Mondays and Fridays, and then the race weekend on the Saturday. It requires a lot from my parents. My mom takes me to practice every Monday. My dad fixes the bikes and maintains it in a good condition. Yeah, support for me is emotional support, um, encouragement when he's doing well, when he's not doing well, when he's disappointed with himself, when he's elated because he's done so well, um, when he's nervous and scared because he's got to ride against um, guys who are seven years old or six years older than him who race national series and are winning. Um, you know, at 11 years old, his confidence takes a, quite a big knock knowing that he has to ride against these kids. And it's the support of saying to him, but just go out and do your best and try. And he comes off the track and he's like, I think I can beat them. And, like, and I will say to him, well, if that's what you want to do, then go for it. And if you don't feel comfortable, then stay where you are. And then there's obviously the financial support that goes along with fixing the bikes. and. You know, if, if, if slate crashes, things have to be replaced. It costs money, race entries, um, you know, future plans so that he can develop to the best of his ability. He's still a little boy. He really is still a little, he's still a little child. Despite what he's achieving, he's still a, a little boy, plays his games, does his things. So, yeah. yeah. My coach is Aaron van Niekerk. He's my cousin who races super bikes at regionals and he's won 150s and he's ridden a lot of different bikes. Slade has got a very bright future in this sport. Um, um, at the young age that he is now and competing against the guys that he's competing and setting the lap times that he's setting and his mental strength when he is on the bike is exceptional. It's 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 almost not not normal. Um, so you know what he's going to have to do now is actually buckle down. He's going to have to work so hard so that we can really get him um, to the the top four and race uh, internationally. Well, we have a very good relationship. We he's very kind to me and tries to help me wherever I struggle. It's really really like it helps boost my confidence. There is about two weeks until my event. This year for the first time they're allowed to use lyrics. So we would never know, it always had to be instrumental. And so this year she's allowed to use lyrics, so we added some singing in the beginning. But the new program is about three times the speed of the last one. It's a lot more advanced. The new program is a lot more advanced than the old one. Can someone do a fall in a spiral? Can you put the leg up if you go too far back like this on the hill, you are going to fall in a spiral. Okay, and also this spiral here is not high enough. Your leg is not above hip height. If it's not above his heart, we're not going to get any value for this power chorus sequence. It's two marks that you're throwing away. Okay. And you certainly cannot fall on this power. Okay. When, you're skating into this, when you're skating into the first power, I need the arms stretched out a little bit more because they bend like this again, like dead leaves on the tree. I'm going to try that again. Are we good to go? Can we get past the chorus sequence? But I need to see the chorus sequence. You don't have to do the beginning, but I need to see the spirals. Okay? Because you didn't do them. Okay, off we go. In figure skating, you have to want to always get better. So that's why we've upped the content of the program. It's got a lot more difficulty in the in between the elements. Plus, she's got much more difficult jumps in it, more difficult spins, and that's the whole point. You have to keep improving. So if we want to win, that's what we have to do. Making the, making the routine more advanced definitely puts more pressure on her, but she has to learn to deal with that pressure. How to practice this event is to run, not eat any sugar, and no colorants and no fizzy drinks, and practice my jumps off ice. Um, I, because I'm in grade 3, I don't really get so much homework. So normally I do some homework on my laptop and 
when I'm just from school and I'm going home and I don't have any time to do my homework, I read in the car to just speed a bit of things up. My future plan is that I want to be a professional skater and qualify for the Olympics and win a gold medal to represent my country. I look up to all those other skaters up there because they've tried so hard, gone through hard things, crying and all those things. So I look up to them and think one day that's going to be me skating in the Olympics. Well, I'm preparing for round five of the short circuit racing. Uh, which is a club race, but it's still very competitive. This next race meeting is, is quite important for the end of the year championship. You know, as every race goes, you earn, a, you earn points where you finish in the race. And so obviously the higher up you finish, you know, first is, is a good, good amount of points for the end of the year. So um, ideally we need him to do the best that he can do, but you know, you don't want to apply too much pressure on the youngster at the moment, you know, he still needs to develop his, his courage and his um, confidence in the bike. So any place in the top top five with the, with the, with the guys that he's racing against are, are quite high quality and his age group and it's his first year um, on the bike, um, I think yeah, top five would be, would be excellent. I do get very annoyed in a race sometimes because you're riding with people who race nationals and who are much older than you and you get a slower marker and that slows you down and they pull a gap. It gets very annoying. But I try to keep my cool and just to keep going on with the race. Well, the biggest lesson the sport has told me is to be humble and to be patient. And it's taught me a whole lot about sportsmanship. During races, um, people, if they come off track and they're upset, I'll go and I'll talk to them about don't, uh, saying to them, don't worry, you rode really, really well, that you have nothing to be ashamed of. And then I'll tell them the little bits where they can improve and where they can go better and hope to see that the next race they'll come off with a smile. If I win this event, I'll be very happy because then I get more points for my championship and I'll walk away with the first place trophy. If I don't win this event, I'll be quite upset because we've been working really hard to improve my bike, but we'll try and hope for the best. Next week, Tony will chill out from the ice rink and we will see if Slade can rev it up and accelerate to the top. Don't miss out. Connect with us on our Facebook page for more news and views.